He is risen. Alleluia. Welcome to St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Cleveland Heights, Ohio, on this most holy occasion. I am Jeannie Leinbach, the rector here at St. Paul's. On behalf of the staff, I wish you all a joy-filled Easter. And I want to take a moment to acknowledge all who participated in the planning and carrying out of our many services during Holy Week, particularly for their ingenuity and faithfulness during this challenging time of COVID. My sincere thanks. In the description to this video is our bulletin. We hope you will follow along aloud or in your hearts. And if you are with us for the first time, a special welcome to you. Please check out our website. In the upper right hand corner, you will see the words, I'm new. If you click on this link, you will find a newcomer card. Please fill it out. We will look forward to getting to know you. Special Easter offering envelopes were mailed to all our parishioners. Donations sent into the church in these offering envelopes and donations made on our website designated for the Easter offering will support the parish's outreach efforts through the rector's discretionary fund and the work of the outreach committee. My thanks for your generosity. Now let us prepare our hearts for Easter worship.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. be with you and also with you let us pray almighty god who through your only begotten son jesus christ overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us say together a portion of Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. 
This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day when the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on the tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. The Gospel of Mark ends abruptly. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. These are the last words of the gospel, fear and silence. Jesus died somewhere around the year 30 AD. The gospel of Mark was written 35 or 40 years later. Even the earliest listeners of the Gospel of Mark knew what came next, that Jesus overcame death. The ending of this Gospel is an invitation. Do we live in fear and silence over the implausibility of Jesus returning to live among us? Do we live in fear and silence over the incredibility of Jesus' unfailing insistence on love, even after crucifixion, the height of injustice and cruelty? His return is implausible. His love is incredible. Do we live in fear and silence? Or do we fall in love with Jesus? Well, what would this love mean for our lives? I heard the Reverend Dr. Sam Wells speak recently about the shame he experienced during this past year. Sam is the vicar of St. Martin in the fields, one of the most famous churches in London. In fact, he speaks around the world about the ministries of St. Martin, most notably their ministries to the homeless. Yet COVID hit all of us renowned or not. Sam had to let go 84 people this year, one third of his staff. And with all the accolades he had received over the years, he felt ashamed for his failure to eclipse the virus. Well, we might give little attention to his emotions. After all, COVID was hardly his fault. Yet let's think again. Don't we get it? Haven't we experienced this shame? Perhaps partly due to our actions, but ignited by circumstances beyond our control? A cancer diagnosis? 
alcoholism, divorce, job loss. We feel weak in a world that values achievement, in a culture that prioritizes control. It eats at our self-esteem. It hurts in our core. Where do we find the power to overcome the debilitating experience of weakness? Henry Timms, founder of Giving Tuesday, the global generosity movement that has raised billions of dollars in charitable giving over the past 10 years, he speaks widely about new power versus old power. Old power values confidentiality, new power values transparency. Old power values competition. New power values collaboration. Giving Tuesday is all about collaboration. Raising the billions in charitable giving happens through partnerships around the world. New power, transparency, and collaboration isn't this the message Jesus has been teaching us all along? Real power doesn't lie in control. Real power lies in relationship with God and with one another. Real power lies in community. Together, we share our life stories with one another. And through these stories, we see the realities of the human condition. Accepting Jesus' invitation to love we walk with one another, offering understanding, support, and a way forward. When we share our stories with one another, the Holy Spirit creates a new story. Weakness need not be a place of shame. Weakness voiced is where transformation begins. What did the Reverend Dr. Sam Wells do with the shame he felt over having to let go one third of his staff? He reflected with others on the life of Jesus. And I share Sam's words. Jesus spent one week of his life in Jerusalem, the last week, working for people, doing what they were not able to do for themselves. Jesus spent three years in Galilee working with people, building a social movement, empowering the disciples, transforming the aspirations of those he met. Jesus spent 30 years in Nazareth being with people, sharing their joys and sorrows offering them attention, understanding, time, and respect, delighting in their way of life, shouldering with them the yoke of their suffering. One week, working for people. Three years, working with people. 30 years, being with people. This is what Jesus taught us, to share our lives with one another, the good and the bad, the easy and the hard. Contrary to popular belief, real power does not derive from personal agency, from control over our individual life. Real power comes through one another, sharing the love known through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. From John chapter 7, verse 38, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. In Jesus' love, we are alive, living how we are meant to live, sharing with one another this grand, challenging, heart-rending, heart-fulfilling experience of life. We are only complete through one another. We only live fully when we are sharing Christ's love, comforting, enlightening, enriching. 
What does loving Jesus mean for our lives? Transformation into a fullness known only through his love. Transformation for us and for this world. We are meant to be so much more than individuals living in the context of community. We are meant to be community. This past year has been difficult on so many levels. And let's be realistic. The road ahead is unclear. But we do know this. God will make something new out of the brokenness from the pandemic. Let's leave our pre-pandemic innocence behind and allow the lesson so firmly impressed upon our hearts through this pandemic year, allow this lesson to guide our future. Loving relationships are vital to our sustenance. Families, friends, communities, nations. The Gospel of Mark ends with fear and silence. The pages following are blank. The words to fill those pages are ours. We can live our lives in the light of Christ's love. We can stand at the foot of the empty cross and know that love conquers the hurt of this world. Jesus overpowered the darkness for us. What kind of love is this? unbounded, immeasurable, endurance, peace, fullness, and joy are found in the embrace of this sacrificial love, a life given up for love, a return desiring love for us all. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him into newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and all his works, and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. I do. do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, his, his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He was, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people, 
and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, that it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth and witness to the hope of resurrection. We pray to you, O Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. We pray to you, O Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of public trust, that they would be filled with the love of truth and righteousness and remain mindful of their calling to serve the common good. We pray to you, O Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those working to deliver us from the pandemic and those striving to hasten our recovery, that they may receive wisdom and a spirit of perseverance. We pray to you, O Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the human family throughout the world, that you would break down the walls that separate us and guide us in bonds of love. We pray to you, O Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, and for those in need of comfort who have been commended to our prayers. We pray to you, O Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And, and also with you.
God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For in these last days, you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, remember Christ's Christ. death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection. We await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints, 
we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Please join me now in saying a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, and you in me, in this, in this life, and in the life to come. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage into sin, into true and everlasting freedom and the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.